Hi, I'm Alan Quinlan and I'm here at the Aviva Stadium in Dublin to talk about your role as a player in managing and preventing concussion. This venue is somewhat appropriate as many Irish rugby players aspire to one day play here. And while hurdles can stand in the way of this goal, one such hurdle, if not managed correctly, is concussion. The IRFU has put together four simple messages as guidelines in the management of concussion. These are stop, inform, rest, return. This video will detail your role within each of these guidelines so that you will know exactly what to do from the time either yourself or a teammate has suspected concussion to the time that you or your teammate returns to play. It will then cover techniques to help prevent concussion. First though, let's find out what concussion is, how it can occur, and the signs and symptoms to look for. Concussion is a traumatic brain injury that affects how the brain functions, resulting from the brain colliding with the inside of the skull. Concussion can be caused by a direct blow to the head or body, and from whiplash type movements occurring when a player collides with another player or the ground. This injury can take place during training as well as during a match. If not managed correctly, concussion can result in a shortened playing career, a more serious brain injury, permanent neurological impairment, and even death. Children and adolescents are more susceptible to concussion and to developing more serious complications. Children and adolescents can have symptoms that take longer to develop and can take longer to resolve. A player does not need to lose consciousness for concussion to occur. In fact, only 10% of concussions result in loss of consciousness, which is why understanding the signs and symptoms of concussion is so important. A sign of concussion is something seen by you, while a symptom of concussion is something the player might complain of to you. Signs to look for on the field are a player lying motionless on the ground, a player who is slow to get up, unsteady, or falling over, a player who is grabbing or clutching their head, a player who has a dazed, blank, or vacant look, a player who is confused or not aware of their surroundings, and a player who is vomiting. Symptoms a player may complain of off the field can be divided into four categories. Physical, how the player is. Emotional, how the player feels. Cognitive, how the player thinks. And sleep, how alert the player is. Physically, a player may complain of headache, sickness, balance problems, or dizziness. Emotionally, a player may feel irritable, they may be aggressive, more emotional, or more nervous or anxious. Cognitively, a player may have memory problems, confusion or forgetfulness, or feel slowed down. Sleep-wise, a player may be drowsy, and they may sleep more or less than normal. Symptoms of concussion can come on immediately or up to 48 hours later, meaning players might be at school or work when they experience them. Now that we know what concussion is, how it is caused, and the signs and symptoms, we can look at your role in the first of the four guidelines. Stop. If you recognize concussion in yourself or a teammate, you must stop playing. The next step in the management of concussion is to inform. Inform. You must inform the referee, your coach, or a teammate of suspected concussion. The player with suspected concussion must be safely removed from play. They must not be left alone or allowed to drive. They must seek medical advice. Rest. If you have a suspected concussion, you must follow the 14-day rest period. If a teammate has suspected concussion, ensure they follow the 14-day rest period. Return. If you have a suspected concussion, the graduated return to play protocol must be followed. You should be cleared by a medical officer. You should report any symptoms. If a teammate has suspected concussion, encourage them to get medical clearance to follow the graduated return to play protocol and to report any symptoms. To explain the graduated return to play protocol, here is rugby coach Noel McNamara. The graduated return to play protocol involves six stages. A player must be symptom free at each stage in order to progress. 
If the player complains of any symptoms, they must return to the previous stage. The first stage involves 14 days of complete mental and physical rest. The second stage involves the player undertaking low to moderate intensity activity, such as walking, swimming, or stationary cycling. The duration for this stage for adult players is one day, and for junior players between under six and under 20s, it is two days. If the player is symptom free during this stage, they can move to the third stage, which involves rugby specific exercise, such as running drills. This period must not involve any impact activities, and the duration is again one day for adults and two days for junior players. If the player remains symptom free, they can move to the fourth stage, involving more complex, non-contact training drills, such as passing and catching, and the player can start progressive resistance training. The duration is again one day for adults and two days for junior players. Following medical clearance, the player can then progress to the fifth stage, involving normal training activities to restore confidence and so that they can be assessed by the coaching staff. The duration for this period is two days for both adult and junior players. 24 hours after this stage, and providing they remain symptom free, the player is ready to return to play. The minimum time of return following the suspected concussive event is no less than 21 days for adults and 23 days for junior players. Returning to play before this period is not only putting your life at risk, but will likely lead to a poor performance, meaning no advantage will be gained by your team. Your role as a player in managing concussion starts well before you suspect a concussion and continues well after you or your teammates return to play. A significant aspect of managing concussion is prevention, and here is Noel McNamara who will explain the best practice in terms of prevention. Most concussions occur in the tackle, so understanding and practicing correct technique will increase player safety. When making a tackle, always ensure your head is placed behind or to the side of the ball carrier. Practice correct technique would gradually increase fatigue and intensity so you can safely progress from the training field to the playing field. As well as tackle technique, you can minimize the instance of concussion by learning and following the laws of the game, by ensuring you stay at peak fitness, and by never returning to train or play before the rest and return period. To recap, concussion is a brain injury caused by contact to the head or body, or whiplash injuries. Concussion can lead to permanent loss of mental function and even death. Signs and symptoms are observed on and off the field and can occur up to 48 hours after a concussive event. If you recognize concussion in yourself or a teammate, you must inform the referee, coach or teammate. The injured player must be removed and not allowed to return until they have followed the GRTP protocol. Returning early not only endangers your life, but will lead to poor performance. Finally, as a player, you are an influential figure in the eyes of your teammates. If you pass on the information contained in this video and emphasize the importance of managing concussion safely, you will help change the culture of concussion and ensure the safety of yourself and fellow players. For more information on concussion, including videos for coaches, family members, referees and junior players, go to irishrugby.ie. If you would like to attend a safe rugby course to learn practical rugby specific first aid, or if you have any questions regarding concussion, go to irishrugby.ie and search SAFE. You can email saferugby at irishrugby.ie or call 086 021 6064. And remember, stop, inform, Rest. Return.